A bit more fire lichen. Oh, maybe some sausage. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you would make it as a cook anywhere. So, yeah, good. It's good. Uh, when the food is done, I'll take my bowl and take a bowl of Tarot and just sit down with him, talk, mm -hmm. chat until it's, uh, Time to settle down. All right. Who's going to take first watch? I will. I think, uh, Karad's, uh, uh, thank you for all the delicious meals that he's been making. But maybe this one. Um, uh, is to not take a watch, apparently. <laughs> oh, no, I just don't. I just don't understand the concept of taking watches. Yeah. No one's explained it. There's one. Mm -hmm. And then Soba. Roll number one. Fuck. Mandatory. We haven't made it a mandatory thing that everyone has to take a watch at some point, so. Yeah. You haven't really done a full thing. You're like, yeah. You take watch, or you're gone. So, as uh, you take your watch, uh, Syra, it is... Uh, where did you end up? Let's actually... With the illuminations, like... Yeah, it's still dark. Um, you hear some sounds of some creatures uh, coming down through some of the, the corridors that you pass through and that lie ahead. But otherwise, you don't see any dangers or anything weird happening. Okay. And your watch goes off. I will go wake up Gage. I'm going to do the next one. Gage wakes up and says, about time to... I got a watch. He'll go and stand and he... Sin and just kind of crosses his arms and just stands near the entrance of the tea cavern, leaning against one of the walls. And just kind of looks around. Lasser, you feel a poke in your shoulder, and you, uh, as Gage wakes you up for your watch, everything has gone by event uneventfully. Take a turn, will you? Yeah, yeah. Good job. Right, roll me a perception check. It's dark out. You know there's mushrooms around here. See some of those uh rooms that you like. I got enough. Um specifically how is um, uh, do, 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 do. Um, God, uh, sick boy, um, Karad, Karad, how's Karad doing? Karad's laying the ground. Looks like his mouth is kind of opening. Uh, does Karad snore? Yes. <laughs> it's a sinus issue. Deviated septum. Uh, all right. 
Oh. I'll Very finish my watch and uh. Goes by uneventfully. Does uh uh. Is anyone else needed for another watch or? Yeah, there will be. Yeah, your third watch. So. Uh, need a fourth. I will wake up. E. Eldis. Eldis. Eldis wakes up, stretches. Ah, my turn. Yep. All right. Go about it, lad. Wait, was it's she so the lucky one to that have a nice pillow? What? Was she the one that fell asleep last watch? No, that was Holly. Oh, okay. Okay, we're good then. And you all uh, start re to regain consciousness. Wake up. Well, this is this is their their. She seems to have relaxed next to the doorway. She's not asleep, but she's just... Oh, you're awake. Has that already happened? Has already that time passed? Good morning to y'all. Or whatever it is. Then you wake up? Anything you would like to do in the morning? Oh, our boy Sarah. Uh, I'll uh, I'll do my whole not really checking on you, but I'm checking on you, saying, Sarah. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you doing? How's it, how are you feeling? That sort of uh, thing. Oh, I'm I'm feeling perfectly fine. Uh, it's still kind of like a little fuzzy mold. Or, Wait a minute. Um, uh, give me a perception check. Uh, you know, I'll I'll blatantly just say, uh, you said perception. Yes, please. Um, has that thing spot been giving you any problem at all? No, yeah. I've I've been feeling fine. I mean, before didn't notice anything before. So. Has yeah, it gotten cause... any? Doesn't bigger. look like there's been any change or anything. This thing's making me paranoid. I'm not saying that to him, but it's making me paranoid. <laughs> yeah, I figured that was like more internal monologue. Uh, and you know, I'll, I'll let uh, I'll give Sarah and Karad a update on his uh condition but i will let y'all know that um it's getting it might be getting to that point where we might have to like actually keep him in sight at all time unless you guys totally trust him well, knowing what we know about what we saw before it's troubling yeah, but anything that you've seen before in this type of situation, or for like the the spore servants, they've were covered in fungus. This is just a little spot. Well, it's probably about the size of a quarter by now. I guess all we can really do is keep an eye on him. If, if he won't let us actually treat him, then... You sound yeah. really close to your mic. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, again, my recommendation is, like, you know, keep him at a distance, but we can see him at all times, like, uh... Uh, in the military, we had this thing called, uh, Suicide Watch. Um, 
we pretty much had uh, people assigned on that one or multiple people at all times to make sure that they don't do anything risque. Um, a risky. Yeah. yeah. Risque usually means probably like something that's more of like revealing. Oh. I never heard that before. <laughs> You've never heard risky. of like risky oh, versus really risque. risque. Oh, I've I've always just thought that people were just being more like like having like how oh, that's so risky. Flair? Instead yeah, risky. flair. Yeah, no. No, risque nope, is actually a word. The more you know. <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't have my soundboard up, otherwise I'd play it. It's yeah. actually one of the pl sounds I play in the podcast, so. But yeah, uh, that's my idea. Um, we can take turns doing so. We don't have to actually let him know that that's what's going on, but I feel like he might need to be watched. Yay, nay. Mm. I'm just so. along for the ride that I really don't have a home no more, so sure. Yeah, so uh, I just think keeping a watch of him for right now. You know, Karad, you're a part of the team. You can have opinions. What? Yeah, you have an opinion. You can have opinions. Uh let us know what you what you think. Oh, okay. And, uh, Sarah, uh, not Sarah, uh, Syrah, what did you say about the whole watching? I said if he won't let us treat him now, then all we can do is watch from a distance and make sure he doesn't harm himself or us. So... I'm taking this as uh, you guys are okay with my plan. Yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um. Okay. I'll I'll uh go around and see if uh, people want to volunteer. If not, I will do the watching myself. Yeah. Like, uh, how are you asking people? Who are you asking? Do you have to uh, volunteer to, for a suicide watch for Sarath? Um, I will specifically go to Ron, Eldis, and Jimjar. Um, he, he's got a what? Uh, um... But I'll try to explain it in a way that uh, it doesn't cause too much panic. Uh, no, no, he, no. I'm, I'm seriously just. Uh, I don't understand what you're talking about. Tell me what do you, what do you mean by this? This is Jim Dora talking, obviously. Uh, uh, what do you want to do? Why, why, why do we want to keep a watch over Sarah? Sarah's, Sarah's like, um, he's he's not that big of a deal. I mean. This is kind of a long little ride. I mean, he's 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 harmless. He might be sick. Um, he uh, we tried treating. Stay him. Stay away from him because uh, don't want to catch anything right, that he has, right? Uh, yes. Like, um, like, what type of sickness is he? Like, what do you mean? He's down with the sickness. <laughs> um, <laughs> it looks like a fungal infection. Did I say that? Ah, right? that, that that's no big deal. I mean, everybody gets fungus. Sometimes I get some in my feet. It's fine. Just put a little ointment on it. Uh, after a while, it's just fine. This is Jim Jar talking, you keep it, right? Yeah, you just need to keep your your yeah, like yeah. Uh, like for my toes. Sometimes it's just like airing it out. Just kind of give it a little scrub. It's fine. Listen, Jim Jar, we, we tried... I mean, it could be human around it. here. I mean, I can understand that, and that might be one of the reasons why why that happens. Fungal infections. 
happens. Jim, it's Jim, a thing. can can I ask you to keep watch on him? Yeah, I'll keep an eye on him. That's fine. Yeah, we, we just don't. I mean, uh, I I don't expect anything to go wrong or anything. It's fine. I'm sure. It's My fine. attack if things go. I mean, do you like good. to ca catastrophize things or something? You seem to be paranoid. I'm. I'm just trying to make sure we get home safely. Okay. Well, yeah, you're just being weird. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. As you as uh, if uh, anybody uh, looks as uh, you see uh, Lassiter having this conversation, as Lassiter turns away to walk to walk away, you'll notice that Jim Jar's going just like <laughs> uh, Ron's like. I'll keep their eye on them. I didn't think there was any problems, some fungal thing. Well, I get those uh, in my uh, toes sometimes. <laughs> we're not too worried about it right now. I just want to make sure he's okay. Can you just keep and him dry? Him. Pat him dry or something like that? We don't want to kill him yet. He I mean, just... It's harmless. He's a weakling. I mean, if he does anything, I'll snap him in two. It's easy peasy. If it comes to that, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. But as long as he's saying we should try to help him. Yeah. Your paranoia is adorable. He gives you a little kiss on the forehead. Thank you. Uh, Eldis is like... Like, it just, just a fungal infection. It might be... We tried fixing it... Uh, Nothing happened. Like it, can you can you be more specific about this fungal infection? Can you describe it? I will try my best to uh, explain this patch of fungi growing on his forehead, yeah. maybe in his brain. Well, I mean that sounds like something that some of the myconids uh, can can do, from what I understand. Um, if there is some something like that, it doesn't seem like it's actually at the point where we need to worry about anything. Uh, if we find somebody who might specialize in this this sort of uh, thing, uh, stools are a little too young, I would I would suspect, for knowing how to basically r remove the spores from the brain, um, right? Safely. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much uh, you know kill kill them. But right now, he's harmless. Right. I just I'll keep it. Sure. I'll keep an eye out, of course. Thank you. Again, don't don't kill him if you don't have to. If I mean, why would I do that? Right now, he's no danger. If anything happens, yeah, you're very he's paranoid, aren't happened. you? Yeah. And current, I, current thoughts of the entire uh, entire NBC party about Lassiter. Lassiter, I'm paranoid. <laughs> I've seen some things, man. I've seen some things. Feels like, you know, might be something like if you're doing a watch, uh, you got a nice little stock that might kind of like set you in motion. <laughs> and if you know what I mean. Anyways, moving on. All right. All right. So I'm assuming Crad makes fine final breakfast, and you you hit on your way. Um. What sort of pace are you taking today? Fast pace, fast normal pace. pace. As much distance from uh, Grackle Stug as possible. Yeah, uh, can we take a fast pace? Yeah, of course you can take a fast pace. That's totally fine. All right, who wants to be the navigator? Or who do you want to be the navigator, I should say? Either one of you guys or one of your NPC party? Maybe you just do it again. Uh, Bless. Ellis. Nice little plus five to survival. So right now, Rot and Jim Char, or Rot and me, or whatever, would be keeping a watch on Sarah's. All this will start guiding you along the direction that uh, you're going. Um, I am going to 
take a bonus. Because we she just crit on her survival check. With that, Sarah is it very excited. He's like, <gasps> we made such a good pace. We're getting ever closer. I'm so excited. So aren't you excited? You're almost home. Less than a 10 day. In fact, half a 10 day, I would suspect. Still is like, yay. Yeah. And uh, she finds the perfect spot. Nice, uh, uh, tight little cavern entrance, which leads into this wide open area with, uh, with it looks like a, a pool of, of water. Uh, examining the pool, it actually looks very clean and like f fresh water. Um, so, it, and it's actually... Despite the pool, it seems relatively dry and cool. Not cold, but cool. A very comfortable atmosphere. Um, there is some patches of moss. Actually, so I suppose it's actually a little humid, but not, not bad. Uh, which look to be nice and fluffy. Examining them, it just looks like just your regular old moss. Nothing harmful or anything. And... Uh, it's like natural luxury. Stool absolutely loves the place. And he kind of like curls up and kind of like rolls in a moss patch. You. <laughs> All right, we'll set up here. Um. We're almost there, I feel like. Uh, I'll take first watch if nothing else is happening. Anybody sure. else say anything before you go to bed? All right. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Uh, roll me a perception check and then roll me a d20. Um, you hear some dripping sounds and you realize it's coming from a small fissure at the top of the ceiling which seems to be dripping into the pool in the in the cavern uh, not making anything rise it's way too slow of a drip uh, you do hear some under dark the regular under dark noises uh, looking out in the cavern you do see some nice patches of fungi but nothing, nothing seems to be passing. Seems like you're in a relatively safe place in the Underdark. And your watch, watch passes uneventfully unless you want to do something here. Um. Who, who's on Sarah's watch? Uh, well, no. you would be. Okay, I'm just doing both. Okay. So you're, um, you're, you're pretty much watching everything. Um, I... Sarah seems to be sleeping like a baby. You know what? Uh, curiosity's sake, I'd like to sneak over to uh, Sarah's. Mm -hmm. and see if he's <laughs> actually sleeping. Okay. First, uh, give me a stealth check. Okay. Hey. Uh. And then give me an investigation check. 
Yeah, I have no idea how. Check them out, right? Wow, that's oh. lame. <laughs> Uh, he seems to be sleeping. Okay. Curiosity sated. <laughs> um. I will wake up. Karad. I'll wake up Karad. Karad, do you feel a poke? You're awakened. What? 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 Is it morning? Uh, maybe, but uh, I doubt it. Uh, hey, buddy. I'm not your buddy. Uh, hey, pal. I'm not your pal, friend. <laughs> Karat, uh, I am going to teach you how to keep watch. Yeah. That kind of hurts. <laughs> um. So I'll just put him down on a, a stone or whatever. You, you can stand if you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'll sit down. Okay. Uh, and all you gotta do is keep an eye out for anything that, like, you know, moves. That's not us. Uh, That's a lot of work. Keep your ears out. And just, you know, make sure everything's okay. If you have to ask if if something's normal, then it's probably not normal. Then you wake everyone up. Can I burn it? Sure. Uh, just as... If it doesn't die immediately, wake us up. Yeah. Um, and when you get tired, like in like, uh, I don't know. Now. Hour? Uh, no, not now. Um, I'm just... tired now. In an hour, wake Sarah up. In one hour? <laughs> so he doesn't take a full watch? <laughs> I don't know how much a watch is. Four uh, hours. Four hours. Wake Sarah up. All right. Actually, I think it's like three hours, but my math is wrong. Four watches, two, three hours. You need at least eight hours of sleep somewhere around there. And right. I will trust, trust in Karad, <laughs> and I will go to sleep. Uh, I'm doing my math all wrong. I'm like, four hours. Do four people do it four hours? Wait a minute. That's <laughs> way too much. <laughs> Three hours. I'm kind of... It's something like that. I'm kind of regretting my decision, so I'm probably going to have a bit harder time to go to sleep. Uh, Blaster, give me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, you're out like a light. You okay, snuggled cool. up in the crotch of Ront and, uh, just the, uh, the thick dick, uh, just is so much comfort. Not thick and dick. Nothing like a orc dick to make you fall asleep. Anyways. Karad, um, I would like you to give me a uh, perception check at disadvantage. She had decent rolls. Not terrible. No, I had a 10 at 11 and a 16, so I'm like, oh, those are actually not bad at disadvantage at this time. Now I want you to roll me a constitution saving throw. What? 
Okay, for some strange reason, your eyes kind of like blink and everything, so things are a little like blurry and like kind of looking around. You get kind of bored. I don't know, is there anything you would do during this time? I would just chew on some sausage and drink a little bit of whiskey. All right, roll me a d20 while you're doing that. Cool. Like, is there a fire going? No. I'd, Nobody has to clarify. Fire fire I'll get a fire going. Yeah. And then do a little bit of control flames and just make figurines and stuff and then retard and other, other dragon. All right, roll me a d20. Another one. So, uh, as you are uh, the second round, you kind of hear something behind you coming from the uh, from outside the little crevice. Do you go investigate? Yeah. Alright. You go look and you see these I'm not even sure if you know what they are. Um, <laughs> you disappear. <laughs> but it's Fuck that shit. It's these little creatures. Uh, are they gnomes? No, they're not gnomes. They don't look quite like gnomes. They're speaking some sort of language, but you you hear some, see that they they've got some chains on them. They're kind of like looking frantically around them. Cool beans. I do nothing, because I don't know what the fuck you want to know. I ain't touching that. Uh-uh, no. After a while, uh, uh, they seem to run off into one of the other ca quarters, not having noticed your part where your party was. I go back to the path of fire. Yeah, can you give me your wisdom saving throw? Okay. All right, increase your sanity score by one. And do I have a thing? Uh, as you watch all this pa happen, uh, you, like, freeze in place for a little bit. You feel it, you can't move, you're invisible, so nobody notices you, but you, it's just weird. And then you unfreeze. Hmm. Place it's fucked up. You have what? no idea what those creatures were. They looked humanoid in some shape. Well, your watch, otherwise, your watch goes off. Not a hitch. Well, I suppose seeing some weird creatures run by in chains was kind of weird. From Grackles, too? Not really, I guess, because don't they have slaves there? Well, I mean, you realized they were slaves. You had no idea who these creatures were. I know. Seen slaves. Is... I, don't th I, I don't think you would have seen these creatures before. So, 
Okay, I'll wake up Syra and then go to sleep. Syra, you're woken up by a Duragar. <sighs> With a red beard. <laughs> Is it my turn already? Mm-hmm. With the red beard and a six pack. No. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Always mention that when I can. <laughs> For some reason. Despite all the food that he eats, Bill has a six pack. He's the, he's he's always the Duragar you hot. really hate. <laughs> he's always he's always smoking hot. She'll she'll fix herself up a little bit and take her watch. Does does uh, Syra look as bad as she as she was when she woke up in the in the inn? When she's here, or does she somehow maintain a semblance of propriety? Well, in the end, especially when she stood up all night, she was a wreck. But when she gets her typical night of sleep, she's, uh, you know, just a little scruffy, but no, nothing she can't fix back quickly. <laughs> she, 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 like, like throws her bedroll o over her so nobody actually see sees her. And then when somebody tries to wake her up, she does a little press digitation, and she comes out looking pristine. <laughs> she unfurls from her, her cocoon. Her, her cocoon. <laughs> I like beautiful to, lady that she is. I like to imagine that she sleeps with a, um, a smaller tent over her whole head. And she she just sleeps it with it on all night. With like a fa oh, like the the face mask with the cucumber sort of thing. <laughs> okay. Anyways, moving on. Go ahead, Syro. Roll me a perception check. Thirteen. She's gonna win this one. Uh, Sova notices. Um, something out in the more open area and goes to investigate and uh he sends pictures to you of uh, a bunch of footprints so she, she sees she sees a bunch of footprints yep um are they mm, how far away are they from me uh, probably about uh, 40 feet away. They seem to have uh, come from one tunnel and they proceed to another tunnel. They kind of like had a, had a moment in a little open area outside your little cave where they were just kind of like moving around and just kind of wander off to it and to one of the other caverns. Did I hear anything or do I just, just see the footprints? Until what made these footprints? Right. Give me an investigation check. Ah, the plus eight, seriously. Mm. They're all kind of jumbled. Um, you can tell they bipedal, probably, but uh, hard to tell what type of creature or what type of humanoid walk through here. Looks like they were barefoot, though. So you're not sure what the creature like were. it's going in the direction that we need to go? Uh, no, completely different. It's like they crossed where your path would be. Quite and possible these creatures didn't actually know where they were going, or they did know where they were going. They were just not going anyway where you're going. No. Otherwise, you're... Other than that, your watch goes by uneventfully. Okay. And everybody regains consciousness. Awakes in the morning? Question mark. 
Uh, people know about the I don't know. Did Krat thing? actually wake up again, or he got his sleep disturbed, and he's he was disturbed when he wasn't sleeping? Yeah, he would have fallen back asleep for because there was another couple hours. Yeah, but I mean, like, did he wake up when everybody else did, or did he end up sleeping a little bit longer? If no one went to wake him up, he probably would have slept a little longer. Okay. So, everybody's wet cred still asleep. How's Sarah? Uh, give me a perception check. Unless you're actually going and, like, actually checking him. Well, I don't feel like talking to him right now. Just gonna... Mm. Just, just kinda... Walk, uh, around him. Just... In his general direction. Okay. You're just kind of meandering around, maybe talking to some of the others. Yep. Uh, and you kind of glance over, just kind of look. Uh, the fuzzy part on the top of his head, uh, it looks a little bit bigger. Uh, you also notice uh, coming from like the like underneath the collar is this little another. See, the mushrooms that you're seeing are red, which is kind of significant underneath his. Uh, against his uh, indigo skin. But you see like another nodule just kind of like at the base of his neck. I'll, I'll keep that noted. Ooh, he's small. Um, I'll go around to the campfire or how wherever Karat is cooking and I'll just wait for a bowl. Well, Karat is asleep right now. Oh. Are you going to wake him up being like, oh, hey, we're getting ready for the head out? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll I'll go over gently just push him a little bit. Um, mm. not trying to be rude or anything. Why now? Uh, Hey, Karad, it's time to wake up. Get out of sleep. You're a little groggy. I want to set something on fire right now. Uh, I'll cast Mage Head and just put it on his face. Just set it. Then, here, set that on fire. Just looks at you. You have this like I don't know what color is your your mage hand. It would probably be golden or uh, what what was that color? Uh, platinum. Um, but it would like this, be see through. This blend of like a a a, a bright silver and a, a, a gold colors kind of swirl in it in this hand that's covering your face red so you still see through it right yeah it's trans transparent and i would have fallen asleep near like the pit and all and stuff because mm. it's just where i am so like just looking at crad knowing where it is and all just roy mustang there's just like great bonfire of the pit right behind him Right behind you, all of a sudden, a bonfire ignites behind you, Lassiter. Oh, that's convenient. I'll dispel the mage hand and just sit down around the bonfire. Is this where you're going to cook? And then just because... The freaking thing. I'll control flames and just make it go. Kind of flashes over over to you, slightly singes you. Nothing, oh. nothing really damaging. Ow. Yeah, I'll go start awake. talking. You had a very groggy Karad making breakfast. He is not a morning person. 
can see that. <laughs> it's even worse when you actually have, wake him up in the middle of the night to give him a watch. He'll get used to it. He'll have to get used to it. Oh, um, while you're cooking, I'll bring up, hey, uh, how'd watch go? It was boring. Um, did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Yes. That's good. Everyone's first time is the most memorable. I don't remember what happened. That's not good. It's quite boring, actually. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I promise next time will be better. Lasseter, as you meander around while waiting for breakfast, uh, you do notice out, out in the corridor you see a series of footprints that lead from one entrance to the open area in front of your cave to another uh, uh, cavern complex. Are, is it our footprints? Nope. Hey, who was on watch last? Oh, earlier. It was me. Did you see anyone walk by? I didn't see anyone walk by. I tried to just make out if I could tell what made them, but it just seems like they crossed in front of our path, but they're not going in our direction. Oh. Well, I'm sure someone has to uh, use these paths at some point. Lester, you want to try to figure out what these footprints are of? Sure. Okay, give me uh, an investigation check. Um, I was already there. <laughs> eh. No, nope. I have no idea. They're just footprints. Nothing special about them. Oh well. Uh, yeah, I'll just wait until breakfast is done to eat. And then you're ready to head off. Same people get the plus three temporary hit points. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll take a uh, point this time. Okay. Go ahead and um, roll me a uh, survival check. Well, are you going to fast pace, medium pace? I mean, you've been going for fast pace for the past couple of three days. Uh, Dara said that he saw like half of ten days left, right? I mean, you've only been traveling for for three, so it's like you made some good time. Uh, how does everyone look? Um, do they look like they are good enough for fast pace? Uh, I look a little, you know, tired. Like having this fast pace seems to be kind of exhausting. Uh, we we can we can slow it down tonight. Let's do a normal pace. No real reason to like uh, risk everyone getting exhausted. I don't think. Okay. So just normal pace. So far, it's been pretty uneventful. So going at a normal pace. Let's see what type of light is around in this area. Sing little song. Still get into some pretty dark caverns. But again, a little bit of light to help those who might need it. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, yeah. everybody with some dark vision can see just perfectly fine. I'm going to take a level one bard on that. All right. 
one last uh, team survival check to find a good place. To, uh, actually, hold on. Oh. Last one, roll me a d20. Uh, five. Oh, six. You rolled the d20 and you got a six? Uh, well, I rolled for survival and got a six plus my five, so. Yeah. Unless you want me to just go ahead and roll, 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 me, roll me another d20. Okay. 13. Okay, cool. Alright. Did a few more other team survival checks to find a place to bet down. Well, that's actually add one to that. No, that's not good. Oof. Uh, just for funsies. Let's see how everybody else gets. That was over. That's that helpful. Or he's really helpful. No gauge with plus zero. There's no help. That's fine. That is helpful. That's all right. Okay. So, uh, you do find it a, a, a decent spot. It's still kind of exposed, but, you know, not nothing too terrible. But hidden enough. If anybody was looking, it still pretty much no ambient light, so quite dark, and you're able to settle down for the evening. Anything you do the evening. I guess again, just kind of keep. Keep looking, uh, watch a Sarah. Okay, you can roll me a perception check. Is this during your watch, or is this just... This is, this is like, you, you guys are starting to settle down before you all go, go to bed. Okay. Uh, it does look like, like he's got that, uh, fuzzy spot has grown a little bit. Not a lot, but it's still a nice little fuzzy patch on his forehead. Uh, and Syra, you do catch this little glimpse of red near the uh, bottom of his neck. She's gonna go. <clears throat> she's gonna kind of go to uh, Corinne and Lassiter, and kind of in a, in a hushed tone. I think it's starting to get worse. I see a growth in on his neck now too. Yeah, I noticed it yesterday. Uh, I didn't want to worry anyone. Yeah, you know, no behavior change. Crap. You know anything about, you know, mushrooms growing on people? Intelligence or just history? Uh, history. Not a damn thing. Nope. Okay. Uh, I don't know. 
Just yeah, he sheltered people. Keep a watch out if, you know, push comes to shove, we gotta make a decision. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll take first watch again if no one else um wants to. Mm, go ahead. All right. Go ahead and uh, roll me a perception check. And then uh, roll me a d20. Sorry, I keep on missing the tab somehow. Your watch goes by uneventfully. I'll wake up. Uh, Sarah, now th this would be like your third thing. Prince, I will. No, I don't really like Prince Darendil much. He's weird. I mean, he's too. just a Quigoth. Yeah. I mean, he thinks he's a elf. He thinks he's an elf, but I mean, yeah, he, he doesn't off. give that much of a like a crazy vibe, but I don't trust him. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pre wake up a uh, Darendel. All right. Uh, do my little hey, buddy. Time to wake up. Time for your watch. This. Oh, um, yep, absolutely. He wakes up, takes up position, kind of watts on the ground. Which is kind of weird if he thinks he's an elf, but for some reason he's very much acting like Quagoth. Kind of strange. Ooh. Um. Uh, I, I wouldn't be awake for it, so I wouldn't know. Does he ever, does he try to take just, like, four-hour, um, naps? Nope, he like, seems to sleep for eight hours, just like anybody else. Okay. Zyra, you feel a poke of a Quagoth finger? Uh, Miss Syra, sorry to, to bother you, but I uh, believe it's your turn for a watch. Oh, you hear like a groaning from her, her bedroll. The, uh, some movement here and there. Unzips it and then unfurls it too. Oh, <laughs> it's, uh... Ah, my, you are always marvelous when you you release yourself from your cocoon. <laughs> so bad. He, he gives you an elegant bow. Oh, I still kind of blush. Like, oh, I, uh, I you know, I, uh, I, uh, 
He's, he's this big furry creature. With really long arms. Short legs. I like... I like big furry creatures with long arms. <clears throat> he goes and curls up. <laughs> curls up and go to sleep. Alright. Let's see. And then roll me a d22. Uh, once you're done with your perception rolls. Okay. Do her. And do it again. Alright. Well. And then there you have one. it. So, you and Sova, as you're, you're sitting there, kind of keeping watch, looking around, you kind of notice that nearby, there, it, it was hard to tell before until you actually, like, started to look around, that there's, a, a, like, a nearby structure, some sort of ruin. Is there any sort of markings or statues or um not really that you can really tell. Uh looks like it must be some sort of subterranean race. Do you kind of investigate the ruins? I'm gonna send Silva to go take a look at it for me first. Okay. Have him roll an investigation check. Doesn't have one. So yeah, just roll intelligence. Yeah. Ooh, she's dumb. <laughs> Ooh. Not great. Nope. Um Yeah, it, I mean it's ruins. It, it doesn't if there is anything like the the structure right now looks fairly stable, so you could easily like rummage around it. Um, obviously if there was some other, some sort of quake or something that might cause issues, but, um, Sova isn't able to, to really spot anything of significance. Um, let's see. Uh, am I the last watch or the second watch? Um, you're the third, so one more watch. I was Laster, Darren Dell, and now you. Um, do I hear anything coming from the, the run? Nope. Right. I'll get closer no creatures, to it. Just, I'll... just some structures. I'll get closer to it and just do my own investigation, I guess. Okay. Ooh, nice. Uh, roll me a d4. Three. Nice. You find... Looks to be the hilt of a broken sword. A rabbit's foot. Which is kind of weird. In the Underdark. But there's a rabbit's foot down here. You're pretty sure it's a rabbit's foot. And a rectangular metal device with two tiny metal cups on one end that, that throws out sparks when it gets wet. Actually, it's probably not wet, so... Two metal cups. Right, I will take that back to my post, and as I finish my watch, I guess I'll identify all three. Yeah. Just to see if there's anything on it. 
Um, you get a mild, uh, let's see, it's evocation magic on the cups that are on the little rectangular metal device. But the other two seem to be just mundane. It doesn't, and the evocation magic is very subtle. You would say if it, if it was anything, it was like, would be something that was cantrip-like. Uh. So, the identify wouldn't tell me what the rectangular device was. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's on the cups. It seems to be kind of like you would you can. No, oh, you're doing identify. So it it's like it has its own version of a prestidigitation spell. Mm hmm. But it's a very, you know, plain enchantment. Pretty, some of that, that's like something that might be like a, a apprentice enchanter would probably, probably work on. Doesn't, wouldn't take long to enchant so sort of like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. You could, probably does something that you can do with press digitation. But uh, you can't really tell what it is at the at the moment. All right, then I will go wake up uh, Holly. Holly gets up, mumbles, shakes her oh. hair. A few droplets splash onto the the rectangular metal devices, uh, tiny metal cups, and uh, sparks fly from them. Freak off for a second, just kind of ah shit. <laughs> but then you realize, oh, it's just the the sparks that you can get from impressive digitation spell. <laughs> no, nope. in that I'll explain what I saw in some ruins over there, and I'll show her what I found, and I will submerge myself back into my cocoon. Twenty here. Oh, another D twenty. Eggs. Uh, Holly, can you roll me a perception check, please? Wee oui, wee. Oui. Yeah. That's too bad. Keep your hair. Uh, all of a sudden you, you hear uh, a, the sound of what sounds like a raging, a wave of, uh, water crashing against water or crashing against the, against a cliffside as you hear a, a, uh, water genasi barbarian go into a rage very loudly in order to wake everybody up. Spring forth from my cocoon. <laughs> hair, hair, half a mess. We'll do. I'm just gonna use this one. It's not actually a bunch of platforms. Well, it's black for me. Uh, but oh, you'll see. Here, let me get get you guys on. Oh, we got Syra, we got Rad. Okay. We got Laster. Yeah. 
Holly. We've got Gage. We have Stool. Sereth. Jim Jar. Eldith. Prince Sterendal. And Vront. Along with. I don't see anything. No one. Now do you? Yes. Everybody else can see things? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I need everybody to roll me initiative. Nice. Prince Durandell. Rot. And I get stool in here? I don't think I got. Oh, hold on. Here are these guys. Cool. Oh, for some reason I have Holly in here twice. That's okay. We'll take one of them. They we're both the same. I don't think two Hollies would be a bad thing, really. I don't think this... Did you actually roll on last for 13? Do I have any other twos? The gauge, got a holly. Okay, cool. I think I got everybody. Oh, except one. I forgot about these.
There we go. Um, Karad, what's your uh, dex? Uh, plus four. Okay. So you are five. There we go. That'll work. Uh, you're awakened by a loud, shining, shouting barbarian, which she's in a rage. We'll do that. And, and she's looking out the entrance to the little area as you see three creatures which looks like to be drow but they've got these red spots all over them i don't like how that looks firebolt which one are you attacking that one that'll hit Ooh, night 16. You smack it right in the face. All it's done dead. This might go quickly. <laughs> you think? Well, uh, quick and cast another one. Okay. This is it called the panic? <laughs> oh, fuck that shit. You shoot it at them and it goes wide. Anything else? That's turn. Yeah. I'm staying right where I am. It's far away. Alright. And you come up down here. You know, go side by side. There's room. Come up to Holly. Make a couple of short sword attacks. Uh, 12 doesn't make it, I'm assuming. Nope. And I'm going to switch this over so it's never whispered holes. And a second one from the other one. 17. That hits. Alright. For five piercing damage, she's raging, so down to two. He doesn't even look hurt. Just a flesh wound. Holly. All right, these, we are. These two fungal-looking drow just packed you. Bitches. I need a deck save from this one. Uh, uh definitely missed. The well, we rolled a three. And now. You shall feel my axe. Attack number one. That's gonna miss. Yeah, it'll miss. Attack number two. We're gonna do a relentless great weapons master. Reckless great weapons master. Do it all. I could rule a lawyer and say you, should, you were should. supposed to be able to do it on the. You had to do it on the first one, but I'm not. That'll just hit. Because with the minus five, that'll be a 17. 16, 16 yeah. Mm -hmm. So then. 25. Slice them in two. The same one that you hit with the lightning? Yeah. I just want to make sure which one to mark dead. Alright. Let's turn. All right. What? Oh, wait a minute. Well, that's not you. For some reason, you were on here twice. Syra. Uh, this is just out of my reach, but if I blade song, well, I can get up to him there and unleash my fiery fury. Fifteen. That'll hit. And second hit. That hits, and he's dead. 
Well, well done. All right. There we go. Nice, quick, quick little combat. This feels like, wow, you guys are amazing. You knocked those guys out, out so quickly. Ron's well, like, I didn't do anything, but I do a little, a little flex. Oh, ain't get to do anything since Ron. Back to bed. <laughs> Falls over. Well, we have been out fighting dangerous things while we've been down here. Uh, Syra? Since you're up next to one, and I'm assuming last year you went to look over one, right? Me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Make my way over there as soon as I can. Looking at the uh, fu red fungus that are around them, it's really, really bad. It's They're just covered with all these red fungus poking out all over. Just like you'll see like full size, small, but full size mushrooms. And just like mold and one of them, one of their their eyes is actually covered up with like a layer of mold. Yeah, it looks just like what's covering Sarah. Yeah, very familiar to what's what's happening with Sarah. Except Sarah is much, much less than what they have. Um I actually want to call Sarah over and show this to him. Oh. These poor men. But, but don't you see? This is this is what might happen to you. Look at the color on this. I don't know why they were attacking like that. Huh. I wonder what made him do that. Must have been influenced by something. Um, I'd like to take another shot at, um, inciting him. Like, is is he just purposely being stupid, or... Give me an insight check. By the way he's speaking, it's like, I mean, he believes he's telling the truth. Like, everything's like, I don't know. Oh. All right. Um, do y'all do mind if I, uh, like, cut into these guys? Oh, they're dead. All right. Cool. Uh. Could I get? I'll go over the run. Um, wake him back up. I know he's he went back to sleep. But wake uh, him back up. What do you need me for? I need your help. Uh, he just grunts as he follows you. Could you bring one of these guys things? I don't know. Uh over and I'll just point away from everyone. Yeah, take him where you point it. Drag. Do, do you want him to just it, he goes to just drag? Uh, uh actually could you like be a bit gentle with this one, please? Alright, so he carefully lifts him up, moves him over, follows her directions. Uh could I ask Jim Jar for a dagger or two. You sure you don't have one? I don't think I do. I, I looked in my inventory. Okay. So he provides a couple of daggers. He he actually just kind of goes. 
And he's got two daggers in his hand. Yeah. He just come out of the sleeves. He Thanks. just kind of like flips him in the air and hands you handle first. I'll return these. Excuse me. Uh, and um, I'll like to spend some time like cutting to these this guy's head. Um, All right. Trying not to. I would like pay. you to make a dexterity medicine check. Uh, if okay. you're, are you proficient with uh, medicine? I am. Yeah, so it's basically dexterity plus proficiency. Okay. Um, so, dexterity. And then plus per your proficiency bonus. What is it? Four now? Three. Yeah, three still. Three still? Okay. Uh, so, uh, like the uh, medic that you are, you're able to carefully cut into to his head. Um, I'm I wasn't I'm not like a, a surgeon or anything, right? So, yeah, right. But with with your training in medicine, field medicine, you know how how to carefully. Like most of what you've done has been more of like other types of wounds to to help pull things out and 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 stuff. A lot of field triage. Um, so you're able to you have the dexterity and carefulness to actually just cut so that you're not trying to actually cut what you're trying to find, but just like get through the layer of skin and actually start dissecting the body just fine. Uh, you go in and you see as you go the skull once you get to that it seems to have there's mold and fungus and seems to have kind of rotted away a portion of the skull and as you go in you do see brain matter but some of it seems to have been converted into some sort of fungus and as you go in it just gets worse it's gross it's disgusting Gusting, and as you get uh, more into dissecting and pulling it apart, um, I need you to make me a uh, Constitution saving throw. All right, you are currently poisoned. And I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. Thirteen. All right. Uh, so your sanity score goes up by one. And let's see. I have a sanity. I need you to now. roll me a one d ten. Fools! It is I you should have been looking after all this time. Now roll me a d one hundred. I don't like all these rolls when I do, but. I'm not sure if this will actually change anything or look like it changed anything, but uh, you currently are suffering from extreme paranoia. And you have disadvantage on wisdom and charisma checks. Next. Okay, how long? For the oh. next 20 hours. So charisma and... A little, little less than a day. <laughs> Um, 
yeah, I'll just keep on cutting into this guy, making sure that I uh, search every uh, crevice that I can, make making sure I can uh, see if I can uh, calculate how long they've been like this, uh, how long until Saris turns into all that. Yeah. All right. Uh, give me an investigation check at disadvantage. Until someone comes and stops me. Because you are currently poisoned. Okay. You're, you're just cutting into this thing. You're just tearing him apart at this point in time, trying to find some clue as to what caused this, what is going to happen, how long it's going to take. <laughs> you're not really sure. It's driving you mad. And that's where we're going to end it for the evening. Okay. Last word. Over to Gore. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. Sorry for any of the dropped frames. We had a shit ton of that earlier, but uh, hopefully most of what came through came through just fine. Uh, we will see you next week for some more Bears and Dragons. This last year goes uh, much more crazy. Mm.